You're listening to the Real Estate Runway Podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, Real Estate Runway family. Wow, I just recorded this episode with Cody Bugan, and you are going to love it. This individual is involved in development, but mainly his, not only is he an incredible individual with an incredible mindset and willing to share some of his vulnerabilities back in 2008 when he lost 90% of his eight-figure net worth, but he rebuilt it all. And what he's going to talk about today is a hidden value that most people don't understand, how to take raw land and actually get it entitled and then sell it to a developer making probably the biggest profit margin you're going to make in the real estate capital stack with little to no risk. It sounds too good to be true. It's not. It's just a, it's an art no one understands. So with that being said, let's get right into the show. Here's Mr. Cody Bugan. All right, all right, all right. Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. I'm your host, Chad Sutton. We're powered by Quattro Capital on this episode, and I'm going to welcome to the show Cody Bugan with Allied Development. He's the founder and owner of that company and Vestrite. So we'll get into what those are and who he is here in a moment. But as we always do, before we get into this episode, folks, if you get any value out of this show, please scroll down, leave us that five-star review and thoughtful comment worth its weight in gold. It helps us get the show out to more people. You can also follow us via our parent company, Quattro Capital, on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Team Quattro Capital. One word, no special characters or by visiting us at thequattroway.com. And as always, we appreciate all of our listeners, all of our feedback. We love to hear from you. If you have any questions, content requests, feedback, or just want to say hello, drop us a note at podcast at thequattroway.com. And if you'd like to be on the show, please visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast. And now on to your scheduled production. Cody, welcome to the show, brother. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks Excited for enduring my uh, spiel on the front end of it. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You got to do it. Got to do it. I love playing that joke on people thinking they're about to talk and then going into that. So anyway, but welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, why you founded Allied Development, Investorite, what those companies do. Let's learn about you for a second before we get into the meat of the episode. Huh. Well, there's a lot there. I could take up your whole show just with that one. But I love uh, it. I, you know, I've never said this on a podcast, but I'm going to say it right now. You just asked me, who am I? And one of the, an individual that I meet with on a regular basis, recurring meeting is, is a pastor friend of mine. And we started meeting, uh, I, I selected five individuals to start doing these meetings with every two weeks. Cause to me, if it's not scheduled, it probably won't happen. And so I put five different individuals on my schedule that I wanted to connect deeper with. And one of them is this pastor friend of mine that I met through mutual friends. And this is funny, this just came up and I, I want y'all to hear it is, uh, I think it's probably about a month ago. He asked me a question that no one's ever asked me before. Okay. And he says, Cody, he said, who are you? And the reason I'm going to share with you who I am is because you just asked the same question. Okay? I love it. Let's go Here again. I've never said this publicly. And so I'd never been asked that. And I, I had to stop and I thought about it for probably, I don't know, five, 10 seconds. And here's, here's the words that came out of my mouth. And this is not real estate related, just to warn you. This is rated to life, okay? And it's on my, it's on my wall here. So I'm going to look over here and read it to you, okay? He asked me, who are you? I said, I'm a broken little boy that's being very intentional and purposeful about pivoting the legacy of my family so that that same little boy doesn't show up in future generations. Okay. So the things that I've accomplished or the things that I'm doing or the humility I'm learning to have or all these different things I'm trying to make happen, uh, you know, cause my career, my businesses, that's just one of, that's just one of the pillars. Right. And it's all, I want to pivot the legacy. You know, I, 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 I don't want it to be the same. I want it to be different, you know? And yeah, I, you know, I started allied when I was with a partner when I was 24 and had a lot of success in my twenties, a lot of success, made lots and lots of money, but I was a workaholic, you know, and you know, where did I graduate from? I, I graduated from, <laughs> I graduated from reality check. That's where I graduated from because I got my high school girlfriend pregnant. And so, 
you know, I was a workaholic in my twenties, sacrificed my marriage, you know, my wife, you know, I was always gone. Relationship with my kids was non-existent, made a ton of money though, made a ton of money. And I was worth, let's just say eight figures when I was 28 and I was worth, I lost 90% of my net worth. And about, you know, by the time I was 29, I went through the great recession, but you know, self-employment was kind of ran in our family. And so that, that probably was an easier hurdle for me than maybe some others. Plus I was only 24. Like fear doesn't, doesn't exist as much as a 24 year old. Correct. So, <laughs> and then about three years ago, you know, went through the great recession, blah, 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 made my recovery. And uh, about three years ago in 2019, I, I had this, um, use the word conviction, whatever you, you know, I, I, I felt this desire, this purpose that came upon me to share all this specialty knowledge I have, right? Because very few people understand raw land. Even fewer people understand raw land that has development potential, right? And even fewer understand raw land that has development potential and how the governmental approval process slash entitlement process works. Like that is a small, small percentage of people that operate in real estate. And it's, it's blue. It really is a blue ocean relative to other business models, right? I mean, nothing against apartment syndication. I know tons of my buddies are apartment syndicators, like nothing against them. Nothing against house wholesalers. Like I, I mean, even though I don't love the idea that you got to buy below market to make a dollar, I don't love that part of that model, but I, plenty of people I know are house wholesalers. But here's the thing about either one of those. There's one of those guys on every street corner, right? How many guys do you see standing around knowing how to do raw land that has development potential and how to get it through the entitlement approval process to go do a value add, get the development approved, and then make the spread on that value add. You don't know very many guys that do that. And so it was just led upon me that, Cody, go share this blue ocean opportunity, this specialty experience you've gained over the last 20 years. Like, go share it. Go make a difference. I mean, that's why it says on my shirt, right? PIF, Purpose Impact Fulfillment. I started Vest, right, for, to fill a purpose, right? To make an impact on people's lives. And through that impact, you know, I would find fulfillment. Happiness is a joke. Anybody that thinks they're searching for happiness is searching for the wrong thing. I don't even like the word happy. Happy's temporary. We're all searching for fulfillment, whether we know it or not. So that's how, that's why I started Vestrite. And it's, it's been really cool to, to mentor and coach and teach others, quite frankly, what I've done for 20 years. Dude, I love your heart. I love where your head's at, your mindset. I mean, I could just tell you're a mindset wizard listening to you talk. I love that you're surrounding yourself with five people you want to get to know better. And I, I would assume those are people you've handpicked who are going to make a positive impact on your persona, your, you know, little boy not appearing in the, in the future. And man, that definition, yeah. incredible. So like, that's probably one of the best questions or best answers to the question, who am I that I've received <laughs> in a while? So I appreciate that. So just being vulnerable, brother, just being vulnerable. Let's keep on that vulnerable track for a second. I always have to ask this because every time I have someone on the show, who is bold enough to say, hey, I got my ass handed to me in 2008, as did a lot of people. If, yeah. you, if you're open to it, I'd love to just kind of hear, you know, how did that play out? What what caused that? What lessons did you learn? Because whether we like it or not, we, we might be on the verge of one of those right now. And, and we may be looking yeah. back 10 years from now saying, hey, back in 2021, I, and this, or back in 2022, I, and then fill in the blank. So anyway, if you're open to yeah. it, I'd love to, to hear kind of where that well, story I'll went. tell you, I... If you cross any line, I'll let you know, but I'll tell you, so far on all the podcasts I've done, I've never had someone cross the line to where I wasn't comfortable because I want to, how do I inspire people? By being vulnerable, right? So I'll share. No problem answering that amen, question. Amen. So let me tell you this. I had a lot of people back then that went bankrupt around me. A lot of people went bankrupt. Those were tough times. There was people committing suicide that were real estate guys, right? Chose to take their own lives. I got to just tell you, I didn't not go bankrupt because I was smarter than the next guy. The only reason I didn't go bankrupt is because I was, I was doing real estate in numerous states. And it just happened to be, my, back then I was born and raised up in the Pacific Northwest and I was doing deals in Oregon and Washington. And a couple of years before the Great Recession, you know, we decided to venture over to Idaho. Okay. We are in a market over there in the Boise Metro. Okay. And the thing about Idaho is they don't have as many controls in place to control supply. It's more of an urban sprawl market. 
than what exists in Oregon or Washington. Oregon and Washington have much stricter rules on supply or growth, right? And so what happens is, is, is that it, it creates more demand a lot of times in those markets because of the limited supply. Therefore, those markets get hurt later than markets that have a tremendous amount of supply, right? Just basic economics, okay? So what happened is I ended up getting whooped in Idaho in 07, okay? Kind of basically a year before anybody else that's even on their, a lot of people that's even on their radar. And what I did is then in Oregon and Washington, I just started getting out of my deals, right? And and get unloading deals. And it's only because of Idaho, the state of Idaho, that I didn't go bankrupt because it allowed me to start making moves in Oregon and Washington before anybody else was. Uh, okay, like that's that's really what saved me. But here's the biggest mistake I made through the greatest the Great Recession. I'm going to share a couple of things with you. One is in my 20s, I was a snot-nosed, arrogant punk kid, okay? Like I didn't have mentors. I didn't have coaches. I didn't read books. I didn't do masterminds. I didn't do courses. I didn't, none of the sorts. I didn't do any of that stuff right? Because I was the man, right? Well, <laughs> so the problem is, is when that's the situation and there's not a lot of humility present and, and all of a sudden, whoa, we're not all of a sudden printing money anymore, right? Like here's the reality. You didn't, you didn't really have to know a whole lot of anything to make money before that great recession. I mean, it was just printing, right? You could have no under, your underwriting could be horrible. You could not have a clue what you're doing and you'd somehow make money. Not because you knew what you're doing, but it's because the market's making you money. So, man, if I just would have understood the value of personal development, personal growth, all the things I just mentioned, if, if I would have understood the value of that back then, mentors, coaches, I could have captured the opportunity that the Great Recession created. So like right now, we're in the midst of a recession, in my opinion. I think it's going to be short and shallow. My personal opinion is I think Fed, Feds are going to start slowing down rates. And I think, I believe the market's going to start to normalize first part of 24, okay? I believe the housing shortage has gone nowhere. It's just all the buyers are on the sidelines right now because they don't know up from down, right? Until the market normalizes, until they know what the new normal is, they can't make decisions. And so we are riding on, excuse me, we are riding on that the housing shortage is still there. And we're trying to pick up very, very talented people during this time because middle of 20 to middle of 22, good luck finding talented people. It was very, very difficult, okay? Right now, we're picking up talented people. That's the first opportunity we're trying to capture. Second opportunity we're trying to capture is fill our pipeline of deal flow because a lot of the guys that were out there doing, quite frankly, stupid stuff, price and terms, those guys are getting spanked right now and they're running for the hills, and so those guys are out of my way, creating artificial, unreal expectations that they can't fulfill. That's the problem with the last recession. I didn't know, hey, this is the time to actually go build an amazing team. Oh, wow, this is the time to go pick up these deals. Yeah, people, it's on other people's misfortune. They used to call it, quote, quote, and I, I don't love the saying, but blood in the street. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to take advantage of other people's misfortune. I'm just capturing opportunity is that I, in my opinion, based upon what I've observed, a whole lot more wealth is generated in a down market than in an up market. That's my answer for you. You know, it, you have a mic sitting there on your desk, right? If you'll, if you'll pick it up and just drop it for me real quick. That was just a fantastic, uh, sorry, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, just wiggling his mic on the TV. So now I love everything you just said there. And, you know, particularly the one about being coachable and, and not recognizing that you know, recession, you don't want to waste a good recession. Let's put it that way, because right. it's unfortunate that some make bad decisions and come upon misfortune. But when money is cheap, that happens. And that's what's been happening to an accelerated degree. But one mm -hmm. thing I've never heard before, and I really respect you for saying it, is now is the time, at least in this particular pre-recession or recession time, because the labor market has been so tight, you know, caused by things we won't get in on this show, human capital, like good people, wow. this is the time to scoop them up. And that is just brilliant yep. because yes, as the labor market is starting to loosen, and I, this will be worse uh, in 2023, mark my words, the labor market is loosening. You will not have 700,000 job openings in 2023 because hiring decisions mm -hmm. are being made right now. 
wow, that is just some amazing foresight. So thank you for that, Cody. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I'll even take it one step further related to real estate. There's a lot of companies right now that are sitting on their hands. Yes. Or even backpedaling, right? The people we're picking up are currently employed, okay? But what happens is, is that a lot of these people are on performance pay. Ah. The generators, they're on performance pay. And when you make them sit on their hands, all of a sudden they just took a huge pay cut. Yes. And so now they're out looking. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect um, sense. Yeah. Those are the ones you want, man. They're the drivers. They're the performers. They're the producers. The ones who aren't scared to work on commission because so, they know they'll produce, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Right. So, all right, Cody, let's pivot over to the meat of the show. Thank you for walking that road with me, by the way. I always appreciate when people are vulnerable in that sense. So- Let's switch over to your expertise and let's just kind of get into what does it mean to be a land developer? I, I'm going to be first to tell you, I'm one of those people who do not understand. I know how to build something. I do not understand how to take a raw piece of land, see the value, and then go get it in title, you know, but it is one of the most valuable things out there and not many people know how to do it. So, you know, let's lead into that conversation and, you know, as the expert, where should we go first here? So have, I have a shirt that says a DCD on it, right? which means dirt <laughs> controls deals. Let me say it another way. Whoever controls the dirt controls the deal, right? So any piece of vertical real estate out there, I don't care if it's retail, you know, I don't care if it's storage, I don't care if it's multifamily, I don't care if it's single family, I don't care what it is. That project or that asset, that piece of real estate all started with the dirt, okay? Yes. So if you can figure out how to control the dirt, you can kind of call the shots on what goes down with that deal, right? Maybe you want to keep it all to yourself. Maybe you want to bring in partners. Maybe you want to sell it, but take, take equity in the deal. Maybe you want to sell it and just make a payday. You decide what you want to do, okay? But here's the thing. There are a lot of people out there, not a lot. There's a few people out there teaching how to go find raw land, rule raw land, and sell it and make a few bucks, Okay. What we're teaching is how to go find raw land because majority of all of our deals and what we teach at Best Right and what we do at Allied is is off market. So almost everything we do is off market. And that allows us to 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 have a lot more control over our own deal flow, right? Deal flow is key. If you don't have deal flow, nothing else matters. And if you're just sitting around waiting for things to hit the market or for real estate agents to call you, you're not in control of your own deal flow. Okay, so first thing is off market. Second thing is, yes, it's raw land, but it's raw land that has development potential. Here again, that can relate to any asset class, multifamily, single family, storage, retail, I don't, whatever, okay? Does it have development potential? Okay, and there are certain things that you need for development potential, and we're just going to stay on the tip of the iceberg right now, but, you know, I, I talk to people about, okay, what's the zoning, right? What is the access? Is there, a, is there public access to the property, right? People got to be able to get to it if you're going to develop it right? Does it have public utilities, right? Sanitary sewer and water and so forth, right? What kind of overlays are on the property? Meaning it might look like a great piece. It might have access. It might have utilities, but gosh, it has an environmental overlay on it where you can't even do anything with it, you know? And so what are the overlays? And then lastly, the topography of the property. Topography of property flat versus upsloping, downsloping changes the development potential of a piece of property substantially for several different reasons that we won't get into now. But those are the five basic points that I tell people to be able to, you need to understand those five concepts just to get the tip of the iceberg of what makes a piece of property potentially developable. Okay. And so we are in the value add business. Okay. And what value add, and we've all heard that term, right? A lot of guys are in multifamily value add where, you know, they, 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 you know, go in and they improve the NOI of a piece of real estate somehow, right? The net operating income. And that could be through decreasing costs or increasing rents or whatever it may be. We're in the value add business related to raw land because what we do is we're not out there wholesaling these deals just trying to make a quick buck. We're going out and tying up a piece of raw land that has development potential. And we're taking it through that whole governmental approval process or entitlement process to turn it into an actual approved development. And what we teach and what we do the majority of the time is that's when we exit, okay? We will sell it to the multifamily developer or 
the DR Hortons or Lennars or Pulte's or KB's, all these publicly traded home builders, we will sell it to them at that point. And we usually will do what's called a double closing or simultaneous closing. And so we'll use our buyer's money to pay our seller and we'll make our scrape out of the middle. Okay. And so that's a way to get into the space without a ton of capital or without a ton of risk because you're really not carrying the land. You're not closing on it. You only own that land for a split second. Okay. Because if you're going to go pay development values for land, don't make the rookie mistake that people do that get into the space and aren't educated. Never close on development land where you're going to pay development values and close on it prior to actually having the development approved. Because until you do have that development approved, all you have is whatever you see sitting there right now. Okay. So if there's anything you could gain from me, don't go pay development values for dirt without the development being approved first. And that's why our average deal, you know, we might have a deal tied up. We, we might have a deal that takes us nine months to close or 18 months to close. Like it just depends on where in the country and the jurisdiction and this, that, and the other. But, and so that's a component of the land development industry, right? Then if you decide you we can close on the dirt and you can go put in all the streets and infrastructure and utilities and all that, and just do the horizontal construction or horizontal development, you could stop there or you could do the vertical too. I mean, there's, there's so many different stages of the process, but what we've identified to be best for us and for others is how do we play in the game with limited risk and limited capital? And, and now we've even made it where our, our students can, our graduates can partner with Allied, my development company, where we'll run the whole process. We will capitalize the whole thing. We will sell it. And they get a cut of the profit for going and finding the off-market deal that has a ready, willing seller. So that wasn't originally our business model with Vest, right? It sounds like a really brilliant, smart business model. And here again, <laughs> being vulnerable with you, that, that wasn't my idea, man. I guess I'm just not that smart. When my students just kept asking to be my partner, so I finally said, okay. <laughs> so anyways, I'm, did that answer your question? Yeah, no, it did for sure. And, and, and you went through, you know, kind of, the five pillars of what you need to know to, to create value on raw land and a couple of do's and don'ts. And so, you know, one thing that kind of struck me there is, you know, you're talking about ways to get in here with, with low levels of capital and, and low level of risk. You, you've clearly developed land from T to green. I mean, you have a development company, so you've also gone vertical with it. Built lots of houses and and all that. Yeah. 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 So, so at, at what point in your eyes, you know, there's always a trade-off of risk and return, right? And and I love that you kind of commented on value add because, you know, we've been doing that for a very long time. And what I'm seeing now is, you know, you're having people who are buying value adds who've already been value added four times this cycle, you know? And so it's like, how much more can you value add something? I hate that word. It's been used way too much. A value add yeah. is not a piece of shit that you can, you know, turn over two <laughs> leases and sell again. So anyway, I digress, but you know, the point is you have seen, okay, what is my average profit margin when I find off-market deal and develop it and sell it to someone else who's going to then title it and then sell it to someone who's going to do land development horizontally and then vertically and all that kind of stuff. You know, at each point in the process, the risk is kind of increasing until you have a cash flowing productive asset. So mm-hmm. in your experience is the, mo- you know, at what point is the risk reward potential the highest is it on the front end only is it going horizontal going vertical getting taking it all the way i'm just curious what your insight is on that i think it depends on the market cycle so for the last several years we've just been exiting everything at that approval process right once it's approved we've been doing those double closing simultaneous closing because we identify that as the sweet spot okay right now because in these motivations shift, well, opportunities shift with motivation, right? Wow. And so now we're talking to some of our clients about being an OBS partner of theirs, right? Which is off balance sheet because these guys, you know, they might be publicly traded or whatever, and they need to keep these things off their balance sheet as long as possible. And so we've identified an opportunity where these guys will go give us enough earnest money, non-refundable to be the equity needed for an A&D loan or an acquisition and development loan. And then, and then what we do is we go and we develop these things for them and we deliver back to, and they're bringing us the project. It's their project. We're taking it from them. They're giving us enough equity, you know, or enough earnest money, call it 20% for round numbers to, to, 
to be enough earnest money for the equity needed for our A and D loan. And, and if they walk, I'm comfortable because that earnest money is non-refundable and my basis is still low enough where I don't think I get caught with my pants down. And so then what happens is I go and I develop the asset. We're, we mainly specialty, specialize in residential. Let's just start there. I just have always been a believer. People always need a roof over their head. They don't necessarily need a storage facility. They don't necessarily need a retail frontage. They don't need, you know, people need roofs over their head. They need a place to live. And so we've always specialized in residential and I think we always will. But what we do and what we teach, let me explain to you that, or say to you, it's 90% the same no matter what the asset class is. The whole off-market prospecting, getting entitlements, getting approvals, it's 90% of the same, okay? But, so I don't think, all in all, I would say, and I'm not trying to be, all oh, because it's my model. I, I truly believe in it. I believe the sweet spot is where you can make the most amount of money or see the highest returns based upon risk is off-market prospecting and getting developments approved because you don't have to take on debt to do it. You don't have to own the dirt to do it. Realize as soon as you take ownership of the asset, most of your options go away, okay? So I don't close until approvals are in place. Market takes a turn. Guess what? I need the price to adjust to the market, right? Now we're not in the business of walking from deals, but I can walk at any time right? Like I have all the options in the world. Market takes a turn. I can go to the seller and see if we can't have the closing happen on the other side of the down cycle, right? Change the terms, the closing. Like I have all the options in the world. Once you take title of the property, your options are very, very minimal. So there you go. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. And that, you know, it really kind of driving home that you know, one of my mentors once told me that for every dollar that real estate values go up on the productive asset side, so let's say it's a warehouse, an office building, a residential property, a multifamily property, whatever it is, for every dollar that real estate prices rise, land rises an average of $3. And he, we went through this whole spiel right. of why that is, but I'm kind of starting to see that, you know, it's less understood. And so when yeah. you can well, still get a hold less of understood. This, it's yeah. definitely less understood. And guess what? More and more storage facility, multifamily buildings, retail facilities. Guess what? There's more and more of those being created. Guess what the Lord isn't creating any more of? That dirt. You ain't creating any more land. <laughs> right? So, I don't know. I love it. I love it, it Makes Cody. sense to me. Yeah. Well, do me a favor here. So, I know a lot of my listeners, and honestly, me in particular, are interested in learning more about Vest right specifically and kind of the program you guys have put together because it sounds like you're not only doing this, but you're you're teaching this and you're probably one of the few, okay. if, if the not the only, you know, actual land, you know, entitler, I'm not even going to say yep. developer, land entitler that is teaching this out here. So tell me about Vest right, how the model works, how the program works, and let's, let's take that road for a second. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I started the own, my own business doing this back in 02, along with a partner back then, him and I were partners for a few years. And, um, you know, so I've learned the hard knocks way, right? There was no courses. There was nothing out there teaching this stuff. So, you know, we learned through trial and error. And, and so, whoa, so th that's where Vestrite came from. And so we've had some really cool success stories this year. People's lives changed through Vestrite and our business model. And uh, so, yes, we've done all of it, right? We've, we've done the, we've done, you know, the prospecting, we've done the entitlements, we've done all the horizontal construction, we've done all the vertical construction, built hundreds, you know, like we've done it all. Okay. Which is great because it gives us a better understanding. But what we teach in Vestrite is where we think our specialty knowledge lies or where we can bring the most value to our, you know, to our students. And that is that I know of, I'm the only one teaching entitlements, right? Raw land with development potential. Maybe there's someone else out there maybe trying to do it now because they caught wind of me, but that I know of, I'm the only one doing it. Well, guess what? I can really impact the marketplace with teaching the specialty knowledge that the Lord blessed me with. And so we don't get into teaching you the horizontal construction, even though we've done a ton of it, as far as, you know, the pipe and the roads and the infrastructure and the street light. We don't get into, you know, escape. we don't teach you all that or we don't teach you home building. You know why? Because I don't have any specialty knowledge there. That stuff's a dime a dozen. Go grab a textbook or go do a college course or go like we don't even go there because we don't bring value there. Okay. Where we bring value 
is teaching off-market prospecting, how to identify raw land that has development potential and how to get that stuff approved, okay? And so we have courses at Vestrite that teach literally A to Z that process from prospecting all the way to getting the deal approved and selling it and how to sell it. We also, but then we also have another, and that's, that's more of like a coaching program. It's really in depth. Um, you know, our refund rate, chargeback rate is basically non-existent just because we packed so much into that. And then because people kept asking to partner with us, we went and created another course called LPU, which is Land Prospecting Unleashed, where we teach you how to, how to identify raw land that has development potential off market and how to go and tee up those deals, right? To try to find ready, willing sellers, property owners, and then you bring those deals to Allied as your partner. And we'll ink the deal with the property owner. We will run the entitlements. We will sell it and we'll capitalize the whole thing. And then we'll cut you in on the profits. So that's the, our most recent program just based upon people keep asking. Incredible. So, Very good. But I was going to tell you, like, I don't know if my team mentioned it to you, or, but we have this, we have a free ebook out there. I don't know if it's, now's the time to tell you where you guys can just go learn more about Vestrite. I don't know if you want me to mention that now as far as where they can find that free ebook or you want me to mention it later, but you know, it makes sense now. Let's go ahead and do it. So where can we find that free ebook? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you want to learn more about Allied, right, what we do and and then what we teach over at Vestrite, I, we created a free ebook a little while ago, which I, it's called Seven Figures Raw Land Paydays Playbook. And so we're basically, we talk a lot about our paydays and how we make six to seven figures per deal, which that's our, what we've seen as our company. But you learn more in this playbook, this ebook we created of how that's possible. And it's all possible through that value add. And so you can obtain that free ebook. Just go to vestrite.com slash RE runway, right? Which is where we are today. So there again, that's vestrite.com RE runway. And you can get a copy of that free book there. And it'll give you a much more insight of what we're trying to cover in a brief moment here today. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, Cody. So thank you for going through that a little. I mean, that is, it's a unique value, folks. I I encourage you to check it out, you know, see if it can benefit you or if you can benefit society with this knowledge. There really aren't that many people out there who understand this. So Cody, thank you for the time on the show. Before we go, I got to take you through four quattro questions, three, because we just hit one of them. You ready? Yes. All right, here we go. All right. What is your superpower in business or life? And how does it benefit you? No question. It's taken me a while to figure this out. And uh, through a lot of different humility, I finally got there. But it's definitely that I'm a visionary slash creative. So like in my, com- in my company, I got out of every executive seat. I got out of the CEO seat. And then I got out of the chairman seat. And now I'm just on the board. But what I bring is my visionary and creativity. And so like even in this market we're in right now, my, my open-minded thinking right? My creativity, my, I like to play outside the box as far as, you know, where's the opportunity that's definitely served me well in my life as far as being able to go outside the box. Yeah, that's incredible. And recognizing that I think is incredible as well. Most people never get out of the operator mindset into the owner mindset. So kudos there. Yeah. I was definitely holding my company back. The biggest problem with my company was me. I had to get out of the way to allow my company to go get what it deserved, you know, or what the opportunity was. Yeah, I totally get it. That, that that is, I mean, the aptitude and the mindset of the of the operator can can wind up inhibiting the business. So I love that. Let's flip the tables. What is your biggest mistake in life or business? So what did you learn from it? So I definitely don't. I usually try to. Well, I'm glad you said. And what did you learn from it? Because I've made endless mistakes. But the question is, do I get to the other side, reflect back, and learn and grow and become a better individual? Right. Here again, going into the vulnerability topic, my biggest mistake, I think, is what I would call when I went through my loser stage. Okay, I went through this time, some different things, you know, kind of went sideways in my life. And I was getting drunk three, four nights a week to escape reality, right? To just, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the victim mentality. I mean, there's people out, plenty of people out there that are true victims, but there's a lot of people out there that would rather just feel sorry for themselves instead of, you know, you know, get up, right? Get, stand back up and play. And I went into a time where I was a complete hypocrite and, and I took on a victim mentality. And I, I call it, like I said, my loser stage where I was getting drunk three, four nights a week to escape reality. And that went on for, you know, um, probably three years, almost four years. And then I finally snapped out of it through some different things. But 
what I learned from that is that guess what? This world doesn't sit around waiting for you. Okay. You know, if you were to use it in a, you know, like this, pretend it's a race for a second. And I don't, and I don't think it's a race, right? I'm not in competition with you. You're not in competition with me. It's one of the reasons why I've cut social media actually out of my personal life, because here again, being a vulnerable, I had a tendency to go onto social media and start comparing myself to everybody. And it just wasn't healthy for me. And so I had to cut it out and just, it just I just had to, because you're only in competition or in comparison with yourself. That's why I recommend everybody go read the book. The gap and the gain. If you haven't read it, read it. And you need to learn to live live in the gain and not the gap. And so, so anyways, before I went into my loser stage, I was leading the pack. Okay, just for illustration purposes. By the time I came out of my loser stage, I was trailing the pack. Right? Is that no one's sitting around waiting for you? Right? This this world moves at a very fast pace, and I really came to realize that because I took for granted how I, where I was at. And, um, I've done, played the last several years, several years kind of getting back on track and feeling good now, but, but, uh, I had to dig myself out of quite the hole. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And by the way, that book will be down in the show notes. Just scroll down on whatever device you're listening to. It'll be right there. Question number three was going to be about the free ebook, but as we mentioned, go to <laughs> vestrite.com slash RE runway, and you'll find his what was it? Seven things to roll in? Uh, yeah. So it's seven. So I, I get it confused all the time. See, my team <laughs> creates all the titles, but seven, seven figure raw land paydays. It's a playbook, but it's all about how we're able to generate these seven figure paydays in our business model. There it is. Thank you for that. So I, I just flipped over and yep. read it and I still couldn't remember it. So that's okay. All right. Question four, you know, Quattro is built on four principles, one of them being philanthropy, people, property, profit, and philanthropy. And so what I love to do on the show is give our guests an opportunity to mention your philanthropic heart. A lot of times our guests have gone and contributed alongside to a cause that they feel, you know, compelled and, and empathize with. So what is that for you? I'd love to, to give you an opportunity to share that. Yeah. So I'm a man of faith, love Jesus, right? We don't need to go there now, but my wife's had a huge heart for victims of child trafficking for longer than me. And a few years ago, it really rubbed off on me and became a very close cause that I wanted to be a part of making a difference. And it came very close to my heart. So that as a family, we're very much united in that space. And, and we've supported a lot of different nonprofits in that space. But, you know, recently I had an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with Tim Tebow. And man, just that guy... Um, he is, he, he is an amazing man. I respect him so much that he has never wavered from how he believes, no matter how much press he got and how much he was taking hits, he never wavered. And so the, the foundation I would, so the cause I'd bring up today or the charity would be the Tim, Te Tim Tebow foundation. He's accomplishing amazing things in the trial trafficking space. And, uh, I'm just honored to, to, to be able to support him in that and be a part of that with him. Yeah, I really love that you mentioned that. I've also supported that one personally. That That's a, uh, it, honestly, anything children related is near and dear to my heart, but especially ones who are forced into a hand that they can't control. And so oh. that is, uh, it, it's sickening, but thank you for sharing your heart there. Cody, yeah. it has been a spectacular episode having you on, your energy, your mindset, your your vulnerability, as well as, you know, this just a very unique value that you bring to this world. So thank you for coming on on behalf of the Real Estate Runway team. Really enjoyed it, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. All right, everyone. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. Until next time, over and out. All right, Real Estate Runway family, that was an action-packed episode with Cody. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you got any value out of the show, don't forget, please leave us a five-star review and a thoughtful comment. Scroll right down on your phone. Those ratings really help us get the show out there. And as a reminder, you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Team Quattro Capital. One word, no special characters, or by simply visiting us at thequattroway.com. Until next time, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.